Did you hear? The secret show is back. It I is. Thought it, I thought it was a secret. Oh, right. Don't tell anyone. All right. You're just between us. Oh, we're on the air now. So, uh, hey, everyone. How's everyone doing? Uh, Patricia Steer here and Mark Sargent there. Hello. How are you, by the I'm way? We haven't, we haven't been on the air in a little while. I know. I've been on hiatus. Uh, is that like vacation only for rich people? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> no. Although you wouldn't class me as a rich person. Actually, I, I sorry, <laughs> I stand corrected. That's for media people. Oh, hiatus. Media, yeah. When you go on a hiatus, that's that's what anyone who's uh, who's doing media stuff says. And we kind of do media on YouTube. Kind of. On yeah. a really tiny, tiny scale. So Every once in a while, except that we're not going to be tiny in three days. Exactly. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the Flatty Awards. Boy, hair is going crazy today. The Flatty Awards that are going to be uh, episode, not episode, um, uh, number three, the third annual Flatty Awards at the conference in Denver. And we want your help on categories for this year. Right. And then next Wednesday for the secret show, we're going to get your help on nominations. Um, what else are we going to talk about? Uh, Elon Musk, probably. Oh, Elon Musk. Oh, God. Uh, well, for Elon, we need a drink. And we do have drinks with we us do have drinks. today. And today I'm going to stop, I'm going to top you because you have a fancy sort of a smoked glass, but uh, mine is, look at this, I've seen this before, this is my Mark Sargent Stay Flat glass. Now that's nice. Yeah. Do you know who gave that to me? Caroline F-E-A-Z chick? Yes. Caroline, the wonderful flat earth chick from Arizona. <laughs> I've got ESPN. So that's how I knew. Uh, and she might not be one of those, I want to be called a chick chicks. Well, it's in her username. Oh, right. That's okay. Maybe she means chic. They're spelled she's, the same, you know. A, she's a flat earth broad. We'll just call it that. <laughs> no, she's a flat earth dame. Oh. I like that better. Yeah. Um, <laughs> she's oh, a flat earth skirt? Mm, yeah, that could be it. That could she doesn't be wear a lot of skirts, though. No, no. Mm -mm. She's, she's How about flat earth badass? That's there what she you is. Go. There you go. Well, I'm drinking a juice drink that's a mix of uh, grapes and raspberries and strawberries and uh, apples. And then in it, the fun part, the stoli. Ah. So, and I have a. Uh, Trendy, but oh so environmentally good glass straw. Glass straw. Yeah. Which was not used for cocaine ever. No. Mm -mm. No. Glass monkey, that funky monkey. I know it's brass, but I just made my own song up. Yeah, really? You're gonna date? You're gonna date yourself with that one? <laughs> and also, <laughs> my uh, napkin for the drinking show is not to get technical, but according to chemistry, alcohol is a solution. So. It is the cause of and solution to most of life's problems. Right. And that's the reason we all are here. Right. Someone had sex. Our parents. <laughs> <laughs> well, unless you're created in a lab. That's what some say. Um, I do want to thank someone for a gift that I've received, and I've not used this gift yet, so I'm going to use it right here. Right. Uh, Reg Shaw, the designer of Red G Designs, who does beading and logo illustration and crochet, has sent me a pair of fingerless gloves that she made herself in sage green. So I'm going to put them on, take this gigantic ring off first. And is, that, these is that a two-finger ring? No, I have some of those actually, but no, this is a one finger mega ring. It's mega. It's almost it's too big huge. for me. It's like a cartoon ring. It is. I don't know. I like really big chunky rings. Right. So a two finger ring would be to punch someone with. And I actually could have a couple of years ago used one of those. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. You didn't have any drinks before we, we got on air, did you? No, no, no. Um, oh, all right. So here's my gloves. There now, is. <laughs> isn't it nice? Somebody made these for me. I like them. I, they actually they go with the outfit. Yeah, exactly. I know that you color I planned it out. Of course. <laughs> but thanks to Reg, she also is on Facebook with Reg G Designs, and I will put a link in the description box if you want to hire her to do anything crochet for you, unless you happen to do crochet yourself, which I do not. Yeah, I don't think yeah, I do that good at love, that. I got to tell you, they're working for me. All right. Yeah. No love without the glove. 
No glove. <laughs> hey, if the glove doesn't fit. You must acquit. Then you probably didn't kill your wife and or the waiter. Mm. Uh, you never got, know. I, I think that there's something more to that story. I think there is more to it, too. I actually like the story that it was his son. Mm. I like that story that it was his son that did it, and OJ just took the fall for him. Well, that's noble, actually, although... Yeah, his son would still be a psychopath in that in that instance, but right. Mm. Mm. True. So there'd be a psychopath. I mean, it's, it, you know, it, it's not the first time it's happened in history. It's like you know, mom, what are you doing? <laughs> wow, well, that would be very noble of OJ. Yeah. Who knows? Who knows? Hard we'll to say. Know. Hard to say. Hey, I got a postcard in the mail. I just wanted to show it real quick. I got it from Nevada. It's from one of my listeners who goes on the road. He said he was going to send me a postcard, and I'll flip it on the back because no one's going to be able to figure out that writing, including my, including me. I think it was looks like my awesome. grandmother's writing. She used to send me birthday cards, and I had no idea what she was saying, but there was fifty dollars in there, so I was always happy as a young girl to get that. Thank you, grandmother. I, whatever you just I, wrote. <laughs> oh, I could top you. Uh, I had an I had a, a grand aunt who, even though she was wealthy, would send used birthday cards, or she would cut out the, nice. you know, the parts. Or well, the true wealthy of the world are usually very um, cheap. Oh, uh, well, heard. you know. Sir, oh, by the way, I'm sorry. The postcards from David Schmidt. Oh, David nice. Schmidt or Dave? Dave Schmidt. Sorry, I don't know if he goes by David. David doesn't matter. Either way. So, um, <laughs> you need a sound effect <laughs> as it Letterman. crashes through a window, like David Letterman's. Letterman, style. yeah. So, the um, thank you for that. And you guys can send anything you want. My uh, street address is in the description box of every one of my now 1300 videos. Good lord, uh, a lot of videos. That man. is a lot of videos. Uh, a lot of well, there's quite a few promos, and there's quite a few uh, pr promos for different things, whether it be Strange World or this or whatever. But there are still, you know, hundreds and hundreds of long videos. You know, 165 Strange Worlds. You and I have done pushing 90 of these together. It seems like a whole lot more than 90, doesn't it? I know. Uh, it's, well, you can remember. Uh, so hard to work with you. That's why. Well, no, it's, well, thank you for that. I hate you. The, uh, no, it's the, the flat earth years. They're, they're worse than oh, cat yes. years. You know, cat years are what? Nine, nine per one. You know, so it's seven, for, is it seven for dogs, nine for cats, or is it five for dogs, seven for cats? It changes. It goes up. Crap. It doesn't really matter. Well, flat Earth years are longer than that. So if you've exactly. been in Flat Earth for three years, you probably uh, felt like 20. And is it aging us physically? I mean, I don't I think it's aging us physically. I look back at some of my old videos, but then again, I had shorter hair. I was you in had shorter location. hair. That really and also, like, I've aged three years, you know, like anyone else. So. Well, today, I look, you have so many different looks. Well, you know what I'm saying. I do. Is Flat Earth aging us mentally and physically Men more mentally, than... Mentally, yes. Physically, I don't people. think that much, but mentally, yes, because time is speeding up and speeding up and speeding up, and it shouldn't be to where uh, weeks are going by like this. And heck, we've got the conference coming up here in I know. eight weeks. I know. Eight weeks. And I remember thinking it was so far away. Even recently when we were in Canada at the Canadian conference, Denver seemed so far away. Right. But it's not. No, it's not. And we've got we've got stuff to do between now and then. Uh, oh, real quick, the, the 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 rich people. I'm sorry, the wealthy. Yeah, the wealthy got that way because they were they never they never deviated from the path. Driving uh, the, older model cars, still in pretty good shape. Oh yeah, save flipping save, coupons, uh, asking for deals. Yeah, now bargaining, you, negotiating. I am a big underpaying big, their staff if they uh, have a big home. Yes, of course. Not big, uh, not all wealthy people, of course, but it's um. So it's something that everyone sort of knows about. Only nouveau riche or newly minted money people are the ones that are flashy with like right. you know, the hot pink um, Mo Ferrari or whatever. Most of the old money, I mean, the, the self-made men, you know, they can't turn it off. My, my grandfather was one of them. You know, he grew up, he grew up very poor and... And then the depression hit when he was like 12. <laughs> oh, anybody who comes from the time of the depression. Anyone that comes from the depression. And and I, I can't stress this enough to anyone out there. You want to read up some, on some American history, which is kind of glossed over. Read up on the depression. Everybody was poor. I mean, with the exception of, of the top, top tier. You know, it wasn't there was no middle class. Mm. 
back then. It was it was the rich, and then there was people that were standing on street corners selling apples. But the story I want to uh, throw out there real quick for some perspective was uh, uh, Getty, you know, the, the Getty family, yes. you know, the old American rich. And I've said this on different things. Look, he built a 110-room mansion. And when guests came over, they were they were racking up long distance bills on his phones. So he ripped out all the phones out of all the rooms except for his and installed pay phones in the hallway so that he wouldn't have to deal with that anymore. And, you know, even though I'm sure, you know, of course he could have afforded it, wasn't that wasn't the point. The point was it annoyed him and if it annoyed him to where he altered the structure of the house itself. Well, he might have felt taken advantage of even if he were wealthy, you know, yeah. no one likes that. I mean, back when long distance costs something, of course. Mm. But come on, I you know these the it's not like he the the people that were in his home were were some of the top tier people anyway. And they were also trying to be cheap and using his his bill, calling on his dime. Right. Now, I mean, he, other people other people would be just well, if I go to his house, I'm going to use his freaking phone, <laughs> right? But no, in this case, like no, 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 no. Um, I want to thank someone else for a lovely gift, which is. This beautiful diamond ring. Well, it's not real, but <laughs> it, this is a chain that comes on my phone. Well, on my case, but this ring is to hold your phone and it flips down and it's really cool. And I stuck it on the back of my case and it kind of goes that's, well. That's what it's for. That's yes. For and I'm wearing gloves and this ring. So, but it is really perfect. And it's from Chris Topher. I don't know if he's in the chat, but he's often in the chat. So because your phone needs more bling, it does. Not only is the case flashy, but you've got the, that <laughs> like chain. Like a bracelet and thing. Now, but yeah, look at bracelet the ring. and a ring attached. Oh, to the and phone. even Greer likes it. Yep. That's giant. Stop rattling it around. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Greery. Uh oh, she's going to drink my drink. I need to move, Greer. Um, uh oh, that's not good. Oh, almost disaster. Oh. Come on now, don't, don't, uh, okay. <laughs> oh, While man. Patricia is uh, managing her cat, <laughs> let me be the first to she say- She grabbed the straw out. <laughs> now it's covered. If anyone can see closely, it's got a cat fur all over it. <laughs> Gross. Wipe it off on your dress and let Yeah, that's what you would do. I'm going to use- That's what I would do. Cocktail napkin, but career. a cocktail napkin? Yeah, the one that said the thing about, what did it say? Not to get technical, but according to chemistry, alcohol is a solution. And oh, right, right, right. cocktail napkins are a solution to cat fur. That's weird. She pulled the straw right out of the drink and tried to take it over on top of the printer, which is right here. So in three days, there is going to be uh, the U.S. premiere of the first Flat Earth documentary, one of several that are being made. But this is the first, therefore it gets a lot of the credit if, if something goes well. Uh, and it's called Behind the Curve. I know you're not a huge fan of the uh, I don't the like the name, but you know what? Like the expression that I hate goes, it is what it is and there's nothing we can do about it. And no. we just might as well embrace it. Yeah. Uh, it's a, For me, as you know, it's a safe name, which is it lets the people that are walking to the door not not feel weird about flat earth it's like oh okay i'm gonna go watch a, a flat earth documentary i'll be able to laugh along mm -hmm. with the rest of the people the title reflects that which is fine uh, it, at least in my opinion uh, anyway it is going to be it at the los angeles film festival three days from now on the um, 20th no three days from now oh it's not the 20th today's the 19th all right we've got the date wrong that's, that's all Okay, why did you already post it that it was on the 20th? No, it's the 22nd, sorry. 22nd mm -hmm. at the Arclight Theater. And you can look that up for the address. The Hollywood and Vine, actually. Holly Hollywood and Vine. And it is going it's to be at Sunset nine. Boulevard. So it's on Sunset. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be at 9.30. And what else can I tell you? There's going to be quite a few people going there. Dan the Waterman, Flat Earth Dude. They're right. going to be broadcasting live on the Poncho Pete channel. There's going to be some happening. activism, which is fantastic. Yes. I do not know if there's going to be a Q&A after the show. But uh, if so, there'll be plenty of Flat Earthers wearing Flat Earth t-shirts who will be more than willing to answer any questions that anybody in the audience has. Right, right. Uh, that's what we should do. Even if you don't like this film and you wish it weren't made, and there's a few people who feel that way, Right. you should go to it and then deal with the people who watched it afterwards and see if you can, you know, wake some people up and change some people's minds about flat earth. 
And I've got to, of course, clarify to anybody that's that's watching this, because if you're watching this show and you go see it, chances are you are a hardcore Flat Earth member. If you've been in Flat Earth for longer than, say, three months, there are going to be parts of this film which you will find disturbing. Well, the film isn't for Flat Earthers. No, no Like this not. show, the secret show, is for Flat Earthers and maybe the Flat Earth Curious. But right. if for people who already are in it, and it's a, the secret show is like, uh, it's right. about the community. In fact, this whole channel is interviews with people who are Flat Earthers so we can maybe meet each other and find out how we got involved in this, each other's background and, and form bonds. Right. Some of those bonds burn apart or fall apart and burn, but you know, many of them stay. Right. And um, this show is what someday I hope there'll be a documentary that is like, not like the show, but that's for the community and that will come. Right. But for now we've got behind the curve, which is for the average everyday Jane or Joe out there who doesn't know much about flat earth. Oh, yeah. think flat earthers are ridiculous idiots the, and they'll learn that we're, we're not. Right. The movie, it plants the seed and that's all I ever wanted it to do which is it follows flat earthers around it follows you and me and bob uh, and cami from globusters and jaron uh, chris pontius nathan thompson and am i missing somebody i don't think, I think so, so but we get to meet your mother yeah, I get, get to, to my mother. We get to go to the conference. Get to go to the eclipse. I was hang there out for, at my house with you and I. You um, and I go to NASA. It's uh, and then everybody at the conference that was there that was willing to be allowed in a show, allow themselves to be in a shot is probably shown right. uh, during a couple of scenes. Right. Um, so anyway. Anyway, again, when you watch it, just remember, because I know the hardcore members are going to be like, oh, and, and the here, because you and I, we went to the world premiere in Toronto mm -hmm. and we got to see it in the theater. We got to see the firsthand reactions. And it the, the problem that Flat Earthers will have with it, of course, is that we have the opposition in the film with us. Right. Oh, simple. there's you, an astronaut. Oh, there's somebody who says we're, you know, mentally unstable. Yeah. They, well, <laughs> Welcome they, to the world. That's what people uh, out there think anyway. We know that. You yeah, know? and th and don't don't forget this because I have heard the Q and A's that have been done to the director and the editor and the producers so far. And that is, without those opposing voices, it comes off. It will come off as a propaganda piece. No, no question. And that is, in fact, if there was, you know, and you and I have talked about this, if you ripped out everybody f that, you know, the scientists, the two scientists, the uh, Scott Kelly and the psychologist, if you ripped them out of the movie. The first thing any critic's going to do, and and so far, the, the reviews have been solid. The first thing it would do is they would come at us and say, why didn't you let science, you know, have their say in this? That's my right, by the way. That makes sense. Oh, your ride's here again. Yeah, yeah again. <laughs> so, but but it's it's true. That's what it would come off. And you remember the first question that they always asked them when they were up there, which was, "What do you guys believe? You know, what does the director believe? Was the editor?" And and even if, of course, they're, they're not flat earthers. Glo they're globalists. But even if they were, you know, even if they they softened up to us after a while, they could never say it. They could never say it. Because why? Uh, how are you going to pull that off? You, once you do, it immediately comes off as a propaganda piece. So just remember, it's a fair look at the people of Flat Earth. It's about the people. But, you know, we're probably going to have eventually a Flat Earth documentary film of some sort that is a, I guess you'd call it a propaganda piece, meaning sure. we make it. Sure. So, uh, we put it together. But that wouldn't be able to get out there until this thing can, went out there. And also, mm -hmm. we don't have the... I mean, I don't know anybody who's a filmmaker in Flat Earth. I know there are people who are, who dabble in that sort of thing. Robbie D does filmmaking, and he's done uh, some scientism uh, films. But I mean, the kind of film filmmaking that gets you into um, festivals like this. Right. So, if we have somebody like that that's sort of willing, ready, and able to put together a Flat Earth documentary that really shows the proofs, which is what right. we really need in there, and we. Both kind of thought that might be in this film, but until we saw it, we didn't really know what we were going to get. We I, only I mean, knew what we were in. The Hungary thing didn't happen yet, nor would this team have even gone to Hungary for for that particular test with FE Core. Yeah, leg Balaton. And you know the the infrared stuff hadn't been, wasn't even out yet. Uh, you know, th remember this was all everything was done. Everything you see on screen here was done in 2017. 
And we all know that when anyone has done an experiment, you don't get it on the first try. There's almost no beginner's luck in experiments. You know how it is when you first go bowling, you could maybe, you know, throw a strike. It's possible. Yeah. Of course. But when it comes to experiments, you don't ever get, you, it just takes a long time to get the equipment right and the other people who are helping you write oh, yeah. experiments. It's very hard. So, um, and Jaron you know, was the first person to admit that he goes in the, he goes in the future. I will never do a live, you know, I will not do it live on the first try, but that doesn't make the earth not flat because an experiment didn't go well, or that right. doesn't make people who did the experiment bad or wrong. Oh, well, this perception. It, um, and you know, had the behind the curve crew been around the next day or waited a little longer, they would have got a, uh, positive for flatness, um, uh, experiment results with right. Jaron, right. of course, because we know that's already happened. Right. Same same yeah. thing. Now it also works against us during the like the during the National Geographic shoot, oh. which you know <laughs> those that and that was their guys' first time, and yeah. because they waited so long, because they were just ill prepared for it, uh, you know the temperature went up, and and you know National Geographic shot what they needed to shoot, which was but, hey it's a globe. <laughs> oh hey it's a globe. Look at that. Like, really? But that had nothing to do with any of the flat earthers there, of course. No. Uh, we only went there to make sure they weren't doing any trickery. And we saw them doing trickery, but we, we couldn't stop them. So nope. I don't know if it was trickery on purpose that no, they waited as long as they did. Mm -hmm. I, I think they literally <laughs> just screwed the whole. I mean, you saw them working on that raft all morning. And they were lucky to get that thing up and running at all. So whatever. Anyway, bottom line, Arclight Theater's. 20 22nd, 22nd. 9 30 bring your lab coats if you want there's going to be activism activism out front uh don't make too much do not get thrown out of the theater do not boo <laughs> don't and get fight with anybody. anyone yeah don't don't give them an excuse you know when you see because scott kelly is only on that screen for less than three minutes uh in fact the interview that they did with him apparently was less than five it was like they got him for a very this is what he says time. the first time i heard about flat earth i was in space Right. Oh, I roll. That, he, <laughs> yep, and that he was there just for that line. That yeah. was it. I mean, it was a it was a, a miracle that uh, that he got that they got him at all. In fact, it's, again, it's another small miracle. Of course, that because could... he's there in order to right. do that sort of thing to be that liaison between the common man and the liars at NASA at the very right. top. Anyway, not all NASA people are liars. And we want even... to help try to convince the world. And that's his job. He gets called in and right. he did. He, he did what he was told. Right. And we don't even uh, we weren't even supposed to get into this festival. That was the other thing. You got to remember, this was not a this is not a documentary festival. This is the full blown L.A. Film Festival that were only I think they, I think initially it was eight. They upped it to 10, 10 slots, you know, thousands of applicants. Thousands. That's great. And we got in. So great. So, you know, make a good impression. Do not do not boo and hiss at anybody. Just be <laughs> positive. Don't throw things. Uh, do well, not what about throwing a little popcorn that can't hurt anyone do, be, do you know I, I know it was easy for the Canadian crowd because they were pretty uh, you know Canadian Canadians, Canadians. Nice. Well -mannered. Canadians. but <laughs> and, you know they didn't they didn't lunge at the stage and try to go after the director the director was very fair in my opinion I like Daniel I like Caroline I like Nick I like everybody involved in this thing and it is what it was supposed to be you know a mainstream look at the flat earth from non flat earthers but from non from non flat earthers Anyway, the thing anyway. is happening, and hopefully uh, Dan the Waterman and Flat Earth Dude and everyone who's going on the 22nd um, to uh, L.A. will, uh, you know, let us know how it went and maybe do some street activism and film some of that, and I'm sure they will, and it'll be on Poncho's channel and other channels as well. And we'll get to see what some of the people who went to the film think. And right. that'll be fun. Do not drink three or four drinks before you go to this. I know you'll be tempted to. Just one's okay. Oh, right. One is fine. <laughs> Looking at you, Caroline. No, no, <laughs> not three lemon drops. And then go in and start slurring at the screen. <laughs> What's this movie about? You shut up. <laughs> she on. won't do you, that. You shut up. Yeah, don't do that. Okay. Um. Oh, has anyone bought the P1000 yet? Yeah. There's been a lot of people have. Yeah. Well, David Weiss <clears throat> has uh, messaged me and it pertains to the P1000 that you can find on Amazon. And he has made a post on the, uh, the camera, 
you know, when you can purchase it, he got himself one. And uh, he, I think he's already, he's already received it, the Nikon Cool Pix P1000. Right. And he has written a, I guess you could call it a review. It's more like an answer to somebody else's question. You know, when people can ask questions on Amazon of the products, mm -hmm. the question was, what kind of telescope would the Zoom be similar to? David Weiss comes in and answers, a very large one. Space is fake. Research flat earth clues. Search P1000 globe killer. Watch DITRH or Jaronism on YouTube. And then I went underneath that and I left a comment as well. So if you have the ability to make a comment on Amazon, if you've purchased the P1000, please go look up the Nikon P1000 on Amazon and then add to the comments. If flat earthers who will be purchasing this together go and just barrage the uh the q a that amazon provides for the products with right. uh you know with statements about flat earth and and places people can go to look like dirtrh named some channels name some channels because we all know that you used to be able to just research flat earth but now when you put flat earth into the search engines you get right. a lot of debunking videos and that of course has been done on purpose so give them an actual place to look a direction to go sure there's that. Yeah. Uh, what else is there before we get to the whole Flatty Awards and getting your categories? Oh, oh. Uh, uh, if you haven't checked out the Elon Musk stories recently, please check those out. Elon Musk did two wow. things recently. First off, as he said, he was going to send finally the the you know the the story about him sending tourists to the moon and back mm. uh, when he when he announced that at the beginning of last year. They, they they shut that down beginning of this year. They said, no, it's not going to happen. Well, now it's back on. Do and they ever give us a reason? I mean, we know the reason why it's not going to happen. But did did Elon ever give a reason why SpaceX tech, wasn't Technical going to hurdles, whatever it was. Apparently like we now can't get out. <laughs> yeah, now now it's solved. And now, but it was interesting because... Oh, the, so they up their CGI abilities? That's how well, they... The, the press conference turned into a, a real soup sandwich because initially they said, okay, the two people that were initially going to go, they're not going to go anymore. So now it's a Japanese billionaire. But then he said during the thing, it's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to bring seven or eight artists with me. That's like, oh, 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 wait, you've just you've just changed the logistics of the entire thing. We've never even had a capsule in the history of fake space that's been, held more than three people. And now you're saying on top of the crew and you, there's a total of eight or nine that are. Wait, what's I think he's talking about the Starship Enterprise. At this point. <laughs> so you're going to bolt a school bus, uh, granted to be the short bus. You're going to bolt a short bus to the side of, of the rocket and send that up. Basically, they're they're saying, oh, we're going to redo the shuttle program. That's and we're going to do it in five years. Uh, it, it's not even going to launch until 2023. It's like okay, it's just it's nothing headline. It, it might as well be, I'm going to create my super jet airliner that's going to go to China for, mm. for pennies on the dollar. Or, or you know, I'll leave my wife very soon, honey. Don't worry. Uh, <laughs> when it's, just a, it's a terrible... When people are having an affair. I mean, any kind of promises where you can just keep kicking the can uh, down the road. Yeah. And yeah. And this can is five years. I mean, five years in, media, in social media now, that's forever. Six months from now, no one's even going to know this headline anymore. Right. And five years, 2020. It's, yeah, it's never, ever, ever going to happen. With what rocket? Now, now it's like, okay, now we're not even talking about a capsule anymore. Now we're talking about a brand new space shuttle that you're going to fly. Who, who's flying this thing? Who are the artists? How are you going to? What, why, what is these, why is the, the, the billionaire, the Japanese billionaire who got on the shoulders of Elon Musk, right. which was really a creepy scene, if anyone's seen that video. This I have not. Um, little, literal piggyback ride style. <laughs> like this is, this is real science happening. This is crazy. Anyway, um, why is he bringing scientists, supposedly bringing scientists? I mean, Artists. artists on board. Are the artists going to be just painting while up yeah, there looking at the beautiful cosmos or something? What, yeah. What and 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 are the artists going to just be taking it all in? Are are they actually going to have art supplies with them? What kind of artists are we talking? Sculptors, painters, <laughs> sculptors. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> you like bring a bunch of clay. It's like, what are you going to? What exactly are you hoping? It doesn't really matter. The story is nothing. It's all fake. <laughs> the, the second the second part of the story, and I don't want to drag this out, was more interesting actually, where Elon was saying, "Oh yeah, by the way." We've got to colonize space as soon as we can, just in case the world, you know, the end of the world comes. It's like, what? And he was really specific about it. You know, he said, oh, yeah, we, we need to colonize the moon and Mars and Jupiter and then go outside the solar system as fast as we can 
because, well, you know, just in case something bad. Well, I'm not saying something bad is going to happen. I'm just saying it could happen. Didn't Donald Trump say that September of 2018 was National Preparedness Month and you should start prepping? Um, you know, I mean, it's just really weird. They're putting these ideas in our mind that the world's going to end, disaster's going to happen, planning something maybe? maybe? Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm grateful. Or just trying to scare us. That the hundreds and hundreds of people that asked me for my survival guide, which is free, you can just send me an email to msergeant23 at comcast.net. Uh, if you want it, just shoot me an email. Say, I want your survival guide, and I will fire it off to you. I, yeah, I mean, it doesn't hurt to prepare. It's a little weird that Donald Trump, during the second year of his presidency, would be talking During about, my reign of terror, I want you all to prepare. <laughs> when, when the book that was written about him was literally titled Fear, Mm -hmm. uh, whatever it, it's all it's look it's not a bad thing i'm not saying look i'm not a fear porn we all should guy. be prepared you should always have look, look food water batteries sure. some sort Extra of light source food, um, baby and, food whatever yeah and something to defend it with i'm not saying it has to be guns but you know if you if you think you can protect yourself with a kitchen knife great fantastic good for you you're not saying it's guns but it's guns or i'm not, not saying, saying it's guns it's but it's the united it's states if you were in another country if you're in england sure a knife a bat a golf club whatever uh, in the united states i'm sorry there's just a lot of guns here i and i've talked to too many people i have talked to so many people that their logic is this it's like oh yeah i've just got a gun and a whole bunch of you know ammo i will take the supplies from somebody else it's like, that's ah, awesome. That's a great work ethic. Way to be a team player. Anyway, um, so we're going to do the uh, categories? Yeah, let's talk about the Flouty Awards and the categories. So for those who are only slightly aware of what the Flouty Awards are, or you know how it all started, or all of that, and what it's all about, it's a Video Producers Award. It's given in love and appreciation from this channel to other channels for their stellar contributions. Now, who am I to decide to do an award show? Just a channel, you could have done it too. Anybody could have if they wanted to. I just thought that it would be a fun thing. And I started doing it on my channel in 2016. That was the very first time we did it. And we did it on YouTube. Right. And then, because we had the Flat Earth Conference coming up, a little over a year later, we decided to do it uh, live from Raleigh, North Carolina last November. And right. so this November at the Denver conference, it's the Flatty Awards version three, and we are going to be presenting 30 something awards to various content providers. Right. And we had categories for our first awards and different categories for our second awards. And I'm thinking that some of the categories that we used last year in Raleigh might be good to carry over into this upcoming one. Um, the, the the awards in Denver, and some of them we could scrap. Here's why. We have, on some level, as Flat Earth, I mean, gone mainstream. It's an insider thing, in a way, the Flatty Awards, but also press will be there. Media are going to be there. And with media there, I think the awards need to have categories that for media, people who are not savvy to all the ins and outs of Flat Earth, the, the categories need to be understandable for them. So if we have things like we did last year, like best dome video, best endless plane video, right. it will be confusing. So I'm suggesting that some of the categories from the past we scrap and some of the categories from the past we keep. So basically the floor is open in the uh, in the live chat and later as this video goes from google hangouts to youtube in the comment section if you've got a category that you would like to nominate and then we'll pour over what you guys have to say and then we'll come up with the categories for next wednesday show and tell you what the categories are and then open the floor up for nominations for who's going to be winning in denver in november got it so, so that's that and my microphone's going to be a little quieter because I will have my hands on the keyboard so I can start typing. Okay, so get your thinking caps on. So flat ease 2018. I'm going to very quickly run through the last year November Raleigh categories. Best okay. flat earth proof experiment, which I think is a good category still. Now, these ones I don't really like. 
best well, short let, video. Let me, let me keep this one then. Hang on. Uh, yeah, best flat earth proof experiment. I think it's a solid, uh, boy, the hair's going crazy today, um, is good. a solid category. We had the second category called best short video under 10 minutes. I, I just think it's wordy. Scrap it. Then we have best video under 60 minutes. Wordy. Scrap it. Best full length video. Wordy. Scrap it. <laughs> best street interview. I love that category. Or best street activism. Maybe we can change it to best street act activism or best street care. activist. They're all good, so it's going to be hard. Well, to we got to say activism, though, because activists, we're going to limit it to one person. As you know, there are some groups out there. Okay, best street activism. It could be one by one person. Right. Um, we had best video series last year. I don't know if that's going to work this year, if we've had series or not. So I will, we, I will look into it. We'll scrap. We had best newcomer last year. Uh, put a question mark by that one, maybe. Maybe we will use that sure. as a category. Then here's one, best globe versus flat earth debate. Sure. That's a very good category. Of course, I'm saying it's very good. It's not really up to me entirely. These are just my, because I've got the list from last year. Right. Best flat earth introductory video, a tremendous category. And of course, people who won before cannot win this year. And are we limiting it to well, videos that came it, but, but in the past year? can win year? it, but it has to be a brand new video. Oh, of course, the person can yeah. win it, but they, the, the old video can't be reintroduced. Well, but that goes without saying, I think. Well, you never know. Well. One more question. Do these videos have to be some things that came out between last November and this November? Yes. Yes, they do. So it's got to be. And we're not picking winners right now, by the way, or nominees. We're just picking categories. Right. Worst NASA mistake. Yeah. We'll put that one. Here's one I think we should scrap. Best dome video. Best infinite plane. Okay. This is a good one, I think. Best flat earth chat room. Let's keep that. Uh, maybe best moderator. That was a fun category. Good for people who don't make videos. Best channel name. That's a nice one. We had last year best flat earth studio and worst flat earth studio. I don't know about those. Uh, how They're about fun. Just, how about just best studio? All right. Best is good. Because uh, Poncho Pete is not going to, well, yeah, because we're going to, yeah. <laughs> Best Flat Earth Meetup Organizer. That's a nice one. Yes. Best Flat Earth Billboard Organizer. Hmm. Yeah, there's, there's been a few. Uh, um, Best Camera Footage is one. I don't yeah. know about that. I mean, that uh, would, okay, oh, all right, all right. Well, no, no, why not? I mean, because the camera footage might just be part of a video that wins for best something something. I mean like per like experiment? Mm, no well, idea. Well, here's the thing though. Like for example, I, I, sorry, I've got, I've got to defend a little bit here. Oh, and by the way, you and I are talking now and then I'm going to put this piece of paper down once we've gone through and all the look the through the chat. Almost, yeah, so chat room. Chat. <laughs> yeah, and you'll have to be I've ignored that. you chat, sorry. Didn't so, you? here here's the reason why I say that. Like for example, would the infrared footage that that's come out over the last couple of months technically be an experiment or would it be camera footage? Mm. Or would it, would it be both? Was he trying to do an experiment or was he just showing off what the camera footage could do. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Yes. So we'll put a we'll put a question mark on that one. All right. Best flat earth meetup video. That's a nice one. Yeah. Fastest growing channel. Yeah. And it can't be Simon Dan. That's a no, better joke. Simon <laughs> Dan. Fastest growing oh. channel. Oh. <laughs> and by that and by that fastest growing channel for this year. Yes, of course. Right. With real subs. <laughs> with real subs. <laughs> well, now with tw with thirty percent more real subs. <laughs> um, best channel intro animation, maybe. Yeah, I mean, people work hard on that stuff. I really? I'm telling oh. you because I've made oh, well, I've spliced together a whole bunch. Uh, intro animation. All right. The next one that I think is good is this is in the music category. The best cover song. Sure. Put that. Best comedic song. Best female vocalist, best male vocalist, and uh, we had the Tiger Dan Award, which we're going to do again this year. It's for I somebody agree. that, and by the way, Dan comes and his, exits. His name's not really Dan, but Dan, if you're out there and you don't want this award to keep going, 
by all means because because uh, i've already grabbed you know i grabbed one of his videos and and put it on my channel and i recently did a channel trailer it's on my channel now which is a compilation of various people without their names it's for you to guess who they are um just sort of scrolling by one after another people that have been on my show right. and I put Tiger Dan in there as an inside wink to those of us who are in the know about Flat Earth who know the story about what happened with Tiger Dan and how weird all that was and it's such a mystery. So I put him in there as a, I guess, an Easter egg. Um, we also had Best Flat Earth Research Group. I don't know if we should have that one again. I say no. Okay. All right, that's my opinions. Was, was, which, that, was that, that was last year? That was last year, and I have yeah. the year before as well. Should we even bother? Yeah, look through it real quick. Right, all right. Just reflect on it and see if there's anything that... Okay. And, it's and funny to look back at this because this is February 15th, early 2016. Okay, so where our heads were then. Best Flat Earth Film. Best Flat Earth Pioneer. Hmm. Best Most Recent Convert. Interesting. Best Video Junior Division, Best Actress. I'm not saying who won these, by the way, right? Because that part's also kind of funny. Best Actor, Best Soulful Female, Best Soulful Male, Best Costume Designer, Best Graphics, Best Body of Flat Earth Work, Best Short Documentary, Most Prolific Flat Earth Channel, Best One Man Show. Best Weekly Group Show, Best Comedy Show, Best Flat Earth Radio Network, Best Science Documentary Series, Best Bible Researcher. I mean, these are some of these are good. Some of these are good. Uh, well, we're, we're gonna. I'm reading these, and in the chat, we'll say like blah blah blah. So just yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So like for example, I just made me think of it, which we didn't include. Uh, uh, best Best Hangout. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. Best hangout. Put because it. you know, a regular hangouts, best hangout series. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. The others were best female whistleblower, best male whistleblower, best female experimenter, best male experimenter. Yeah. We were kind of experimenting. Then. Wait, about, I mean, you and I just came up with these, you know, talking on Skype before, right. basically like, like last year's, but this right. year we want everyone involved with categories. We had everyone involved last year with who was going to win, but this is categories and win. Right. Um, most missed flat earther. Oh, let's put that. It doesn't mean we have to keep it, but I like yeah, it. Yeah, we'll come up with a different name for it. Yeah. What about best flat earther that we don't miss our worst flat earther? <laughs> don't come around here no more. <laughs> That'll be the name of the category <laughs> now. Um, nice. Wow, this was a long one. Uh, most helpful video, best well, yeah, demonstration. We didn't get trophies. That's right. Why. We had one trophy that Mr. Moot made me and sent to right. me, um, as a mock trophy, and I just sort of held it up. And we never mailed it to anybody, and never said we were going to. But it was just to pretend right. to have a real show. And now we're actually doing it at a conference last year and this year. Um, we had angriest flat Earth rant pro and angriest oh, flat Earth okay. rant con. I remember some of those guys. Mm -hmm, me too. Uh, we had most inspirational video too. Right. It's kind of nice. Yeah. Um, <laughs> one last category. We won't do this one, but it was from the very first Flatty Awards. Most, this is most, an most anti-flat earth videos created, but least watched. <laughs> you know, somebody who made a whole bunch of I hate flat earth videos that nobody ended up watching. You know, we could, I, I hate to say this, you know, I, but, but flat earth is a very open, very kind group and we, we don't really attack and, and, you know, we, we've never Some done anything. Do. Well, I mean, we haven't they done anything their horrible, own. <laughs> horrible in the last three <laughs> years. Don't make me laugh. <laughs> so, uh, maybe we should single out the finest troll work of the year. Finest say. troll work. Seriously. You know, All right, you know, well, you know, we're gonna leave that up to those in the live chat where yeah, I'm yeah, going right we, now. 
I mean, I like I like the idea of pick, of singling out. You know, give, don't give credit to a whole bunch of them, but one. And that is, if you if you if you've gone out of your way, you've given it exceptional 100%. work and trolling, head and shoulders. Yeah, exceptional work and trolling. The right, Bridge right. Troll Award, right, twenty eighteen. But yeah. a lot of the people we consider trolls, they consider defenders of science. That's a fine. lot of them consider themselves to be intelligent people fighting against us dumb flat earthers they don't sure. call themselves trolls sure, so is sure. it right if we call them trolls probably not no, they're still trolls <laughs> Absolutely. No, so no, anybody no. who disagrees with you is a troll i don't think no no, no. if they go out of their way to make videos look look let, let's get specific here hmm. if they go out of their way to make videos where they're lashing out where, they're, where their videos are titled flat earthers are stupid here's why mm -hmm. flat earthers you know to, you know we, we're not going to name names right now hmm but there are a lot of them out there and some are uh, have been doing this now for the better part of three years but would it I be think. negative and maybe we don't want to yeah it, we, but we do it in a positive way you know what i'm saying <laughs> okay. it's like look hey we're the giving best, them an award <laughs> the best <laughs> troll of the year and who knows maybe they'll be like you know what these flowers aren't so bad we've been oh well, been that happened on the air as we gave him the there you award go award for best. the most angriest anti-flat earth rants then he fake friend friended me Fake right. convinced several people, including me, that he was a flat earther, and then turned against us all. So yeah, it's a but no, don't, don't, don't give him an excuse to come oh, back. Yeah, and he's he, right now. He's he he he's, he's going to make a video and, and use that, like jumping on Stephen Christ's grave. Mm. So it's, LSC is not dead, by the way. He's just out of the way right now. No, he's back. He's got another ch new channel. No, I don't think this is his channel. I think it's a fan channel. But it's got I've, him I've, talking I've, on it. Well, I, yeah, I could grab videos from last year too and put it on. unless oh. they're new videos. I haven't seen a new video. I don't know because I don't watch, but I was told that he's back. But I don't know. I'm uh, probably wrong. I don't pay any back. attention. Well, let's say somebody can confirm that the videos I was watching, though, but I recognize some of them. He yeah. did, or somebody acting as him commented, and it went into my spam uh, on my channel. Was it, was it from the new channel, though? That I don't know. I just mm. got rid of it right away, and it said you will soon learn that what you're preaching isn't the truth and you will burn or something like yeah, that i'm like I delete fake, <laughs> i could fake an lsc channel if i wanted to if he's if he's truly back if he's truly not incarcerated anymore i'd love to see it was he really incarcerated uh, i believe i believe on the you know, the thing things. about flat earth and the, the campfire we're all sitting around a lot of people say a lot of things about a lot of people and oftentimes they're proof is only the words coming out of their mouth. Right. I think because we're looking for proof of the flatness of the ground we're standing on, we should demand more when it comes to proof about accusations against fellow human beings. And I'm talking about a lot more, not just words. I hear you. All right. And on that note. Okay, so we go into the chat room and seeing <laughs> And you're looking for words that we don't know. I, I've got the list in front of me. Mm -hmm. So look for things, categories, not to be confused with categories. Oh, yeah. Ca categories that we may have missed. All right. I'm in the chat. I'm writing, hi, category suggestions. Um, Ginger Sugarbush905 said, Patricia, don't forget the worst YouTube name award. Wink, wink. <laughs> Yeah, Ginger Sugarbush 905. You might win that one. No, 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 no. That is a good name. Worst it, YouTube it, name award? No, Ginger Sugarbush Sugarbush is a great name. Oh, because you, were, you remember it. Well, no, if you were an 80s porn star, then that's oh. a great name. Oh, no. <laughs> but if you're a tall, redheaded man in Canada and you're doing YouTube videos, not the best name in the world. I'm just saying. <laughs> Come uh, on. Mikey Smith says best hair category. <laughs> uh, he shaves his head, so you know. Hey Ginger, Ron Jeremy called. He says <laughs> keep using that name, and he'll smack you for trademark violations. Um, bipolar Flat Earth High says I don't know. Best research group was cool. Cough, cough, and he puts the the initials for his research group F R E E. Um, somebody named Gobbledygook. Hello, says best Mark microphone award. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, look, I didn't, as you know, uh, I did not make this microphone. This was given to me by Chris Pontius. Yes. FlatEarthModels.com, along with a hat. Now, this is hilarious. Test Vision says, best waste of a guitar. I think I win that one. Since I have the guitar, I've never, well, I've had a couple lessons. But I don't know how to play behind me. 
a guitar is also a piece of art. So. Well, I got this guitar when 2015 came around, my birthday's in February, and I got the guitar, and around that same time, March, I discovered Flat Earth in 2015, and it was a bucket list thing, learn to play guitar, and I just, my whole life changed, and my time, amount of time I had for free time changed. Uh. So um, that's my excuse anyway. So yeah. I'm not getting rid of the guitar. I thought at one point of doing so, but I don't know. Someday maybe I'll play it, someday I won't, but it has become art. Yeah, that's what it yeah, is. I like it. I dig it. Yeah. Um, Sleeping Warrior says the worst explanation for gravity. Uh, um, Arwen, he says, because he doesn't like Arwen's right, explanation for right, gravity. Right. But that's the thing between you two guys. Um, what else? Um, best weekly show says Glaucoma. Well, you know, Glaucoma, as the name goes, is a very good YouTube name. I just want to let you know. That's not bad. That. Weekly show. Best weekly show. Let's put that. Put that there. Sure. Um, no one's flower says, Nora, worst bald patch on flat earth. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> Does that mean something? It just sounds funny. Um, Talking about my hairline? Better not be. <laughs> Globuster says, best explanation for gravity. Globusters. <laughs> <laughs> um, best flat smack, Nathan Oakley is uh, saying. That's a best good one. Flat, but best flat smack's not bad. So let's do, put that in there. Yeah. Now, Glaucoma said earlier, best flat earth meme. But then the thing about a meme is, although that's a good category, we are talking about the category of YouTube uh, and videos. Right. Since it's a video awards. Yeah, it's, a vid it's a video award show, people. It's like no. the Grammys, and you know, but for flat earth. And it's just, like I said, it's not like we're trying to be Hollywood. It's just an attempt to... Um, do something nice and fun for the community, something lighthearted. The problem with memes is, is that you can't time date stamp them. And right. so people would be giving us memes from freaking, oh, have you ever seen this? It's from like early 2016. It's like, oh, oh, yes, I've seen this. Like the bullet hole, I've seen this. Oh, the that. Yeah. That was good, yeah. the bullet hole. Yeah. Um, Flat Earth Vegan says best Flat Earth couple. And of course, they would probably nominate themselves. But I like that. Let's put that down for a thought right. anyway. There's a, hey, look, there's a few out there. <laughs> Barbara McGill, hi, Barbie, says, I wouldn't nominate the hat Mark was wearing for anything. <laughs> ha ha. But ha, it was ha. made by Chris Pontius, the Flat Earth model maker, and he gave it to Mark as a gift. So the microphone's so, okay, but the hat, oh no, the I, hat's out of bounds. I'm wearing, I'm wearing gift gloves somebody made for me. So never look a gift glove in the mouth, or is that horse? But yeah, I'm appreciative. Patricia's wearing a ring that looks like it was made by, from a polished beer bottle. <laughs> no, it's it's um some form of lucite, a polished beer bottle. I don't even drink beer, but it's a good idea though to start what, to, drink, to drink beer. <laughs> start drinking. <laughs> um, all right, uh, bl best flat Earth experiment. Chris Topher has said. I think we've got that one. We already got that one. Yeah. Um, let me, let me, uh, categories for award, something that people have done that you think they should get some recognition for best flat earth daily show. The, how, how many daily shows are there? Mm, that's true. Um, Jose JG Gonzalez, who's been doing a lot of stuff on his channel lately says best face for a radio show. And he nominates D I T R H. <laughs> All... But we're not doing nominations now. Just uh... categories. Oh, by the way, Suzette Ann is trying to claim your hat. She would love that hat if you ever give it away. Is she coming to the conference? I think Suzette Ann is coming to the conference. Is she coming to the conference? If she's the first one that asked, I might actually bring it. Yeah, she, she asked. Uh, I, I initially was going to give it. Asking. I was initially going to give it to a child at the conference. I know Chris Pontius is going. Don't give it away. It's like, come on, I've already mangled it because I've already, I already chopped the top off. Well, you've got what is needed out of it. It's fun. You know, I like the hat. But if, if, if Chris, if you're listening, if you want to make me a better hat, a cool. Oh well, this is a pretty cool hat. I got to admit. Plus, it's really neat because it's battery powered. You, you can run off a USB, or you, you like can, your toys. I do like. I, I seriously, there's a lot of electronics around me right this second. <laughs> I can move. If I wanted and, to. And by the way, Nathan Oakley echoes what I was thinking. D I T R H is a handsome fellow. Yes, I think his uh, girlfriend Paige is a very lucky woman, especially. I believe anyone's lucky that has a, a spouse or a mate or significant other that is into the same stuff. You're I too mean, good for him, Paige. 
I'm just saying. <laughs> run now, run. <laughs> Uh, or in the case of Nathan Oakley and his wife, she's not a flat earther, but she knows all of the people in flat earth and is very aware of what's going on and supportive. And there are other spouses of flat earthers who are like that too. Right. But I have heard there have been a few instances of relationships not going so well because of flat earth. So, you know. What? Well, uh, yeah. It does. Um, it does. Oh, here's one. Someone writes the best cognitive dissonance award. It's an interesting idea. Yeah, that kind of goes along with the tr usually if you have someone that's that far in, they would turn into a troll series, which mm -hmm. is what okay. I'm still gunning for. I still think the the you know the most outstanding tr troll of the year is should get recognition. Anyone that is willing to remember because it helps our metrics. Anyone that's willing to make more than one flat Earth video a week against us and keeps doing this week after week, month after month. Uh, well. You know, like I was saying earlier, a lot of the um, fighting comes from within. And weirdly enough, Trouble About, who's in the live chat, hello, says the behind the scenes bitching in FE is huge. So many hate vids made by flat earthers against other flat earthers. Indeed. Did There's you? always uh, one to three channels that will do a video immediately following a secret show. You, uh, wait, you know what we do? Two to three do. days later. Because they need, they need us in order to make their own content. The behind the scenes bitching and false accusations. I mean, it, it, we could do a whole awards category on that, but of course, this is supposed right. to be a positive thing. Yes, that is true. It's all positive, no need, people. And no need to dwell in negativity. And you know, the, the hate videos, whatever. What it does in the end, it doesn't hurt those that the hate is directed toward, but it does create more flat earth videos on YouTube. <laughs> so that's always good. Um, what else do we have here? Um, mm -hmm. I haven't said hello to everyone like I always do because I'm actually scanning and trying to find the uh, nominations. Um, <laughs> DITR8 says the dumbest hat award. We can give that one out now. <laughs> really? Dude, I people, didn't. Okay, look, I don't hated make your microphone. these things. People hated your I don't request. Wait, I'm wearing your shirt, DITR8. So don't <laughs> <laughs> don't give me any grief all well, right look a, this, what about this is a, a category about shirts this is a flat earth podcast shirt uh Let's no do no a category no shirts uh, no the problem with the shirts is going to follow the memes and also yeah you're right it's not about a video it's the Very same true. well no it's not that it's just it's going to follow the memes and some of these shirts have been out there for two and a half years very very true and it's hard to tell how old's your shirt <laughs> yeah yeah we don't know um we could yeah I guess if somebody were printing their own shirts, we could award them if they were actually designing with a, like a press and everything. Yeah, I but mean, no. Uh, Nathan Oakley asks, "What about this best UK flat Earth debate show?" <laughs> um, well, you know what? Here's a category: best. Let's just write best flat Earth debate show because there are a couple. We, we already have it. Oh, we, we do. Okay. Well, yeah. I mean, it's it's included in the the Globe versus the FE debate. Okay. Okay. Good. So. Good. We mm. all know who the best shows are out there, man. <laughs> we already know this. We'll, we'll get to them. Five Arts Liberalis, who, by the way, made the thumbnail for this video, which is a redhead roller skating, uh, says, best 24-7 FE hangout. Winky face. Um, no, but but we could do a... I, we could do, aside from the hangout, we could mm -hmm. do the best 24-7 channel. Meaning, you know, we've got those those pre-recorded channels that are out there running That's stuff. True. Except, except eh, the problem with that is is that a lot of the people use the they same use other people's materials. Yeah, other people's materials. And those so. channels are for non flat earthers, just random curious folks who will go in and stumble upon like a Rub Skiba video or a blah 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 video or right. right. Um, <laughs> Jose J G Gonzalez says best Puerto Rican. Sorry, Zulu, it's me because <laughs> they both are. <laughs> I thought I thought Zulu was Mexican. <laughs> He's lovable. That's what Zulu was. <laughs> um, let's see. I'm scrolling and scrolling. Hello, Ranty Flat Earth. I'm going to say hello now to people because. Sure. Um, it's your show. Why not? Sorry for the scrolling and the boredom of the scrolling. Um, oh, by the way, Chris Topher has a word of wisdom who says the reasons Globers troll flat earthers is because they think personal attacks are valid if you dare to doubt their religious science. And science is spelled P-S-Y-E-N-C-E. -E. Very true. Flat Earth Vegan says best dressed flat earther. 
Best um, dressed? What is this, high school? <laughs> best, best hair. Dress. Best smile. <laughs> Most person you want to be stranded on a desert island with. Exactly. Most which likely. Is a nice way of saying person you want to be naked with. <laughs> Biggest lush on flat earth. Most easy <laughs> flat earther. Actually, the lush thing would be a tough one to pick. There's yeah, a and we couldn't do that because this we mainstream media is going to be there. And you know that they are already are going to print some crazy stuff, but we can't stop them from being there. And right. in the end, it may attract more attention to Flat Earth and somebody might research it. So, you know, by the way, we haven't yeah. plugged the, uh, the we company. don't want to have like best drunk Flat Earther as a category, although that would be fun. But no, that would be uh, the we, we haven't really plugged the, the conference too much. And that is, look, if you don't have your tickets yet, go oh, yeah. to fe2018.com where you will see the Flatties live mm -hmm. on the end of the first night mm -hmm. with you and me hosting. Exactly. And, and um, in the description box of this video, until the conference occurs, there will be a link just in case you forget. Oh, wait, right. that website? That's where it is. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. Highly encourage everyone to go. It's, uh, I think last... this is going to be the most fun one yet. Oh, good Lord, yeah. I don't know why. I just have to Well, mo mostly because we, we've already got the kinks out of the system. We, we're, you know, we don't have to, there's no nervousness anymore. There's so many people that already know people. There's a, a big sense of familiarity there. And so people will be going, it's like anything. Once your conference hits a certain mark, you, people are like, oh, right. And again, it turns into a summer camp. Yeah. Where, this where, is going to be like flat earth summer camp in yeah. the fall. Right. Just, hey, look, drink responsibly. That's all I can say. Exactly. Don't. And remember, while there, because press is there, that everything you say and do can and will be used against you. Well, so I, I personally yeah, recommend don't wear a tinfoil hat just for fun, because that's what they'll focus on. And then, you know, you know, because you said that you're going to have people that'll be. It happens. I've seen it already, uh, and I'm like, no. You, I know, you know that Chris Pontius is actually bringing a, uh, a. Is it a mobile home or a trailer? Mm -hmm. with that's going to actually it's going to be a living embodiment of this it's the whole thing's going to be lights that's what he does which is cool well i'm just saying that the media is going to be all over it right well, i guess that's good so whatever Plus, he's a really just, nice guy so just, i guess you know what i take back what i say be you be who you. am i to tell you what to yeah, wear don't yeah i mean yes the cameras will focus on you if you're some wearing people would weird. say why are but, you wearing those gloves or that giant ring i mean you know what i can't judge but if you're wearing something weird is my only advice here if you're wearing something weird be sure you have something to say because they're yeah. going to ask you oh yeah they're, they're going to be like so what about the flat earth microphone in your face okay uh you know better have something there's a channel who I've not yet seen here called Non-Schooling who writes to me, what are your thoughts on homeschooling in the school system? Well, my thoughts on that are, I think it's fantastic to homeschool. I wish I had been homeschooled. There wasn't a movement for that when I was born. I was born in 63. I'm sure there were some people who did homeschool, but I don't think the words homeschooling were even used back then. There was just a small group of people who did that sort of thing. Um, if I could do it all again, or if I could control you know, those sorts of things in the past, that would have been fantastic. However, my mother, who was a stay-at-home mom, although later she went and got her master's degree after we were older, uh, she was very, she taught me how to read before kindergarten. She was very much a homeschooler, but from her own thoughts, she didn't go with the curriculum to make sure we had the advantages to get ahead. So I think homeschooling is fantastic. And if a person or a family can do that sort of thing, I think it's great. And I don't think all of those things people say are true that your children won't be socialized and won't be able to deal with the real world. What's the real world other than a series of lies agreed upon? I think homeschooling is fantastic. And if non-schooling, that's what your channel does, then that's a channel worth subbing for anybody out there who is um, having a baby anytime soon. Oh, and by the way, speaking of babies, congratulations to Amber Plaster and her man. They just had a baby girl. I forgot to mention that. Congratulations. Another flat earth baby. Yay. <clears throat> and when the baby came out, bet they flat smacked her. That's funny. <laughs> I know. It's good. <laughs> uh, let, if anybody else wants to ask me a question, you can put it in all caps in the, I'm just really not thinking about questions toward me. Really? But that I are encouraging people to use all caps? Well, I <laughs> know. Uh, but yes, it's easy in, in the live chat. Um, hello to Renee Cal Calusia as well in the live chat. Scrolling down. Um... Just Jack Flat Earth says, best interview on Mark Sargent's Strange World. 
<laughs> and, of, of just Jack. And yeah. just Jack says, yeah, he wants to win that one. Right. Um, I'm scrolling down a little further. Celebrate Truth is mentioning the Flat Earth Video Awards 2018. Yes, that's what, and the trophy itself is called a flatty. So, right. Um, what else? Um, best Master Debater. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see what you did there. That was uh, say Bob of Globusters. He was a cunning linguist. Mm, but we probably shouldn't. <laughs> Greg T says homeschooling illegal in Germany still. Didn't know that. It's kind of crazy. Mm. GoPro Flat Earth UK Darb says bringing people together award. I like that. You know, the whole Flatty Awards, the we've, Flat we've Earth Video got Awards a, a, is all about bringing people together. That's the purpose. I think Making our meetup organizer happy. category, though, covers that yeah, one. Yeah. yeah, okay. But it's a very good one. Right. Um, favorite voice of Effie Award. That's a nice one. Sure. But let's write that down. Okay. That I'm telling you to write it down. Write that down. Well, no, Scribe. Do that, it, might as well, it might as well be. Uh, Get a quill. Best, no, best uh, quill. A quill. So you when you said one of my you meant shiny seven, pens, if you want. 1763. Yeah. The, um, well, uh, I've, been, I've been around for ages. Would you like to use my shiny pen? Yeah. Yeah. Patricia officially is not a vampire. I'm required to say that by contract. Let's see. <laughs> And by the way, that could be uh, Effie Radio Show, the best voice. Because oh. there's are, there are a number of radio shows out there where it's just voice. Right, very true. I mean, so. when I was in radio, all I was was a disembodied voice. Right. So, not that I was famous or anything. I just played records at a very, very small radio station, a couple of them anyway. At a gothic radio station? No, it wasn't. Well, I mean, part of it was in the 80s, but no. Uh, urban contemporary slash R and B at one point, and I had to go to a couple of uh, live meetups where you'd go to a car dealership or an opening of a business and be there or for three fair. hours. Yeah, you know, I did county fairs as well, and you get paid like a hundred dollars to go, and then the booth would be set up by the engineer, and then you just come and you do you do your radio show from there. You know, the song would be played by the DJ back in the booth in the studio, and you. Right. Would, go for the breaks and say, hey, it's whatever my name I was using then was. It's I never used the name Patricia Steer, but it's Patricia Steer, and I'm here at the county fair here in Modesto, California, where I actually did work. Right. Um, and uh, yeah, that was that was radio. That was mm. that was it. And you were a disembodied voice. And I would go there because of, well, of working at one point at a country station, and I didn't really like country music. And I also worked at, like I said, at a station that played R&B in the evenings. And I was often asked, oh, wow, I... I didn't know you were white because the station played R&B music and that was I was just a voice. Oh, paint right. their own ideas about what that person will look like. That's why that expression, you've got a face for radio, comes from, meaning a lot of unattractive societal standards anyway. People are in radio um, because, you know, you think, oh, this woman's going to be gorgeous. And then when you meet her, she might not be, or the man right. will be handsome and he might not be. But, Howard Stern. Perfect. Perfect example. Yeah. Um, what else? Uh, la, 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 la. We've got, I think, like 28 or 29 right now. Just That's so pretty we'll, good. We'll go over it after. <laughs> Plasos Plateau says live remote. Yes, Plasos, you must have been in radio. We call those things live remotes, live broadcast. Um, I don't use the industry term live remote when I'm talking to non-radio people, but we call them remote broadcasts. Like the weatherman that was uh, buffering himself against the wind recently down in North Carolina and South Carolina. You saw those clips, right? No, I didn't. Holy smokes, you missed that? Oh, it was great. That. It was circula circulating around where um, they had a weatherman on the Weather Channel, and mm -hmm. you know he was bracing against these winds, right? You know, kind of people like toward the side of him with these big, heavy blowers, and then all around was beautiful blue skies and no, sunshine, and no, he was standing in the lake up to his it, his knees. It, it was worse than well, that. Well, they do it, do that a lot. Well, they do do that, but there back behind him were a couple of people just walking across the street in shorts. And you know they, the yep. was no, wind wasn't even bothering them. It's That's because, how they do it. Yeah, it's like okay, we need. I know it's only twenty mile an hour gusts out there. You, you got to make. You got to sell it like it's fifty. And, well, haven't there been many, many instances where people have been on top of a building pretending to be in some war torn area, but they're really on top of a building right. with a green screen behind them and. Yeah. 
you know. Like, I mean, the the old saying is true, which is if it bleeds, it leads, and right. it doesn't just mean that uh, that people actually have to be bleeding. People like the drama, and they like what's you know what what is happening. Is, is no, the it's the same in flat Earth, you yeah. know. Yeah. I mean, no wonder we have the drama that we've got. I think people yeah. just get bored and turn on each other. <laughs> wasted production value. It's wasted all, production value. All, although we are getting good at it, so you know when this thing finally does blow up. We'll uh, we'll be ready. That's for sure. Um, Michael, no, Mike Live one two eight five has asked me twice, and I wasn't ignoring you, but I was talking about other things. Please talk about SpaceX plans to send tourists to the moon. We kind of already touched. Yeah, on that. we did that. Where were you? A little yeah, bit earlier. The beginning of the show. And we know it's never going to happen. Never going to happen. The, something they're going to talk about to program the masses that we're going to be doing that, and then it'll kind of fade away, and no one will ever talk about it again. If I had to take a bet on a space story that they will try to cultivate, it would be uh, Space Force. Space Force. Space Force, because it's military. I think that's going to uh, fade away. I don't think it's going to go anywhere either, but uh, mostly because of the recruiting problems. But if you wanted to nurture something, that's what I would go after. Hmm. Space Force because it's a government program. It's not. Oh yeah, a, you can. Do, you don't need to do things in space. All you need to do is do all the training and everything on Earth, and right. keep putting money into that as a money making thing, programming people's heads that it will be for space. Sure. And you don't even need to do anything. In space. Straight up Space Marines or the uh, guys from Starship Troopers. Yes, exactly. So, which they would um, probably play during recruitment. Hello to William Genska, who's in the. Uh, the live chat. A hi to Ute and um, Irk Childs. Hi, Ute. who's uh, Ute Hube? He used to be, but now he's just Ute. Uh, I don't know if anyone's ever seen Ute. Ute, have you ever been seen before hmm. by anybody it's here? It's also the mascot of the University of Utah football team, the Utah Utes. Really? Mm -hmm. That's something old. I would never know. I wish I didn't. And yeah. you could ask me next week. I would forget because those sorts of things, money or not the other. <laughs> Sorry. Chris Van Maitre is here who says hello. Hi. Um, <laughs> gobbledygook hearing us talk about Ute in the live chat says, what's a youth? <laughs> you know how Ute, the right. Utes of today, meaning youth. Oh, well, that was, that was famously used by, uh, oh boy. Uh, Sounds like Archie with, Bunker. No, 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 no. It was a movie with Joe Pesci. Oh well, all right, Joe Pesci. And uh, not Sandra Bullock. Um, Marissa Tomei. I think she won an Oscar for that one. Uh, uh, my, co my cousin Vinny. Yes, my cousin Vinny. Yeah, that was a yeah, pretty enjoyable. That was a line movie. that was used by the judge, who was the same actor that played Herman Munster. He he was the one. What's a Ute? That was a, one of the famous lines. Anyway, you can look that up on YouTube, kids. Um, it's an oldie but a goodie, just like you and I. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Uh, well, I said, I'm older than uh, you. <laughs> um, Charlotte her. and Paul Flattastic say, hello, everyone. Has anyone seen the new trailer for The First Man on the Moon? I've seen it today on a YouTube ad. I've not it's seen it. It's out, though, right? I don't know. Did it actually come out? No. Uh, I'm going to look it up. Uh, maybe. I don't know. Dang. Boy, I'd feel weird going to see that. I don't want to see it. Oh, I'm definitely not going to see it in the theater. There's a lot of things that people tell me about, and that's enough information for me. <laughs> some of those things are videos, and some of those things are movies. You know, you don't. Some things you just don't need to don't need to put your eyes on. Uh, first, Ranty Flatter says this community rocks. Indeed, it does, and we are glad that you are a part of it. Definitely kicking the ball to the curb on on the daily. Oh, it's not out yet. Okay, Still. so. I have noticed that on my videos and on everyone's videos that put a commercial on there right. or when YouTube puts a commercial anyway because you use music of somebody else's type that they own and then they monetize it for you and you don't get the money for it, um, that I have oftentimes commercials about space on my videos. October 12th is when it is coming out. Mm. And there are, you know, again, it's going to, it's going to catch a lot of hell because the, uh, the Canadian director and Ryan Gosling, the Canadian actor 
were quick to say, because as you know, you and I talked about this a little bit, how the American flag was not shown. But also, won't, weren't, aren't people going to say, well, why are they not using American actors in this thing? Well, why aren't they using you know American anything? They, they, like that. they tried to appeal to the uh, world market by not by omitting as much American stuff That's as you a can. Lie. I mean, that doesn't make uh, sense. I'm like, because because it's not an American. If it's supposed to be portraying an event that supposedly was real, why wouldn't you? The Ameri I mean, the don't Americans, try to make it into something that it never was. Yeah. So, in fact, they were even saying, oh, you know, at one point they were thinking of, of using the UN flag instead of the American flag. I'm going, yeah, my ass they were. That's crazy. Never in a million years. Would they the, have UN the UN flag. <laughs> a lot of people wouldn't even have known what that was back mm -hmm. in 69. They're like, what the heck's that blue thing? Why isn't it the stars and stripes? You know, it was the that was the whole point of the space race. If it was a human achievement, there would not have been a space race. In fact, there's your there's your argument right there. Interesting. Which is okay. If it's a human achievement, why were the Soviets? You know, why was there this you know back and forth so much? Nah, I don't get into it. Don't see it. It's not worth it. Anytime you see review online and you have a chance to post something for flat Earth, go ahead. Um, let's see. Uh, Zulu one says all of you guys with videos have space commercials. So I remember when I first started on flat earth in 2015, I don't remember there being space commercials on YouTube. And what does that tell everyone out there? I mean, I'm sure there were a few. Right. I didn't see them. You know, when I first started, I used to get a lot of commercials for steak for beef that would run on my right. uh, interviews. I hey, mean, did, did Chris Hatfield no get any? Because um, I see it was Chris a Chris Hatfield. Hatfield commercial. I think everyone's sort of seen that on yeah. Flat Earth. Well, he's he's got a, a master class. I know that in lying or what? Exactly. He's part of the master class program, and he's got he's doing what car commercials and crap like that. And it's like, but he still hasn't retracted that whole bullet hole thing. Well, has he retracted his life? Because that needs to happen too. Yeah, she's speaking the truth. Yes, I am. Word. Um, <laughs> Whitest girl ever. Same word. Well, when I'm wearing fingerless gloves, I feel that I could say the word. word. Really? Yeah. Really? Because that, that beefs up. Street cred. Yeah, your street cred. Oh, it's huge. And by the way, these gloves were gifted to me by Red G Design and Reggie Shaw, who crocheted them herself. She said, yeah. I thought they would look nice on you because they're a, a pretty color of sage green. They so are cool. quite fetching. Well, I think it's just nice somebody gave me a gift, you know? And I earlier showed Chris Topher's uh, thing here that's this ring that holds my phone so right. that I don't drop it. So nice. You have ridiculous amounts of bling. I know. Um, there was something else I wanted to mention, and it's here on my phone. And, of course, when you want to find something, where is it when you want to find it? Um, I will scroll till I find it. Aha! Aha. Hmm. Uh, uh -huh. Okay. Um, Mac, we all know as Flat Earth Fokker, I've interviewed right. him, and he is also pictured very briefly in my recent channel promo. So Flat Earth Fokker, total awesome street activist. I've met him in person. We had dinner with Transvestigated him. Transvestigated Cammie Nodal and myself and determined we were both women and made videos about it. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so funny. Um, there's a big event. His plan is to have this event on March 11th, 2019, and he's going to call it Expose the Lies. I'm reading this off my phone here. Mm -hmm. So he and uh, Dave Zoom Truth in New Jersey and Authentic Intent, Josh, are presently trying to focus on getting the idea out there in hopes that it gathers traction. They want it to be a special international day where flat earthers and general truth types um, hold simultaneous activities and do activism on the street in their respective cities. And so this was sent to me on Skype by Nora, no one's flower to, you know, put that out there. And he says the full name of the event, Mac, Flower Fokker, that he wants to do is expose the lies to end human enslavement. I like it. So that's March 11th, 2019. Yes, it's a while away, but it'll come around sooner than you think. So message Mac, Flat Earth Fokker, if you want to get in on this thing he's going to be planning in 2019 or talk to um, Zoom Truth and, uh, you know, Josh, Authentic Intent, etc. And by the way, Authentic Intent, we want to bring him to Denver. He does so much good work. 
and there is a community sort of PayPal thing happening. I put it in the description box. It's a link where you can click and then go and donate to his PayPal. Not so he can amass a pile of money, so that he can go to Denver and enjoy the conference. So if you've got an extra five, six, seven, whatever, $10, whatever you've got, click the link, it's in the description box and it will help him get to the conference. And of course, anybody can do a PayPal to go to the conference. And if you, you've got one going, let me know and I, I will you know, put it out there. So you know, any, any way that you can get there, that's fine with me and I'll, I'll, I'll definitely um, donate too. Hey, did, did Robbie Davidson shave his beard? Um, I don't know, but he did grow one for a while. Why do you ask? Well, because I think he was getting a lot of a good traction from the beard. And I just, wa I just saw um, an interview that he did and it looks like he shaved it. I think his wife browbeat him into shaving it. Oh, I thought he looked great. I thought he looked great too. Unless he's thinking, oh, okay, I can grow it back in well, eight weeks. It's like, yeah, you could. It's a cool thing about being a man that you can grow a beard and have a totally different look or a mustache or whatever. I think it's cool. I know me saying that I've never grown a beard in my life. Well, not all people can. Men can do it, but some can. I guess women have got makeup. Do you, do you know mo the biggest reason though I never did was because I never, never found a woman that said I never even heard a woman say, "Oh yeah, beards." Yeah, but beards are a hot thing now. Gets me going. Well, no, I, the, the hot thing is what I don't care if it gets ratings. Do women like men with beards? You know, their own, it's not, not from afar. I mean, like you go to dinner and climb into bed with a guy with a beard. That's that, is that what does it for you? I've never met a single woman. They say, oh yeah, he's attractive. Now I'm not talking mustaches, I'm not talking Tom Selleck. Everybody right. That. that he's, he's good looking with or without it. Although with it, he's definitely. I think if a man is good looking, if you're a woman and you like men and he's good looking to you and he's your type mentally, right. then you will like his facial hair or his lack of facial hair. That's how I feel. Yeah. that's how i feel uh, i've just seen the opposite most of the time i mean women are like yeah just scratchy scratch the whole scratchy thing you know markovsky says maybe he doesn't like an inchy face and so he being robbie shaved it possible maybe. um chris Topher says you can also use the phone ring to make it a t-brace to stand your phone on indeed i'm doing it right now i love this thing chris i love it i love it Love it. Cool. Um, sure, <laughs> Test right. Vision says some women have beards with a frowny face. Yeah, that would probably be not so good. Yeah. yeah. Um, I've been lucky being a redhead, having very light blonde hair that you can barely see. So thank goodness for that. <laughs> see, you're not a big furry person. <laughs> well, no, no, I'm not. I mean, I don't, you know, that's not for me, but I don't know. I love cats. They're furry. See, if, if I had to redesign <laughs> human beings, and you've heard me say this. Yes. It, oh, sorry, I would. I, I, hairless, all, completely hairless. Well, yeah, all hair. No, actually from the uh, uh, nose down. So eyebrows, eyelashes, good. Nose, eyebrows, eyelashes, nostril some hair nose good. hair because that's a filtering thing. You need and, that. And, and, and hair, hair, good. That's and hair, hair. That's it. Everything from the nose down. And some people's like, what about ear hair? It's like, that's just weird people. But... <laughs> Ear hair fetishists. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, it happens, and I've seen it. It's like, holy smoke, did a squirrel crawl in there? That's just oh. amazing. Uh, but but seriously, <laughs> other than that, do you need anything else? No. Well, I mean, they say you need the gentle hair because it supposedly provides lubrication during sex or like, I don't know. And it, and it, oh, this is gross. Why are we talking about this? I must fin finish the sentence, though. It, um, it <laughs> oh, yeah, contains the I'm... smells, uh, supposedly, although we wash them off in modern society, hair that are is... attracted they will attract pheromones is what I'm saying. Well, yeah, but hair is also notorious for uh, holding on to odors. Well, well, that's what I mean. It it holds on to those odors that we in modern society find unsavory. But back in the back in the back in the back of the day, that was right. enticing sexually. <sighs> and maybe it still is on some level because there are fine perfume manufacturers that do put a bit of, let's call it stank, <laughs> into fine colognes. It's hidden. But it's pheromones. Sienna Collins in the live chat says pheromones. Shauna. Uh, oh, Shauna. Oh. I know. She spells it Sienna. Ah, I've said her name wrong all this time. Sorry. I think she was adopted. I don't know. Nora of No One's Flower says, I like rabbits for pets because they have the nicest fur. Oh, yes. <laughs> How did we I say rabbits into that? <laughs> okay. Okay. People, when, when humans get redesigned, they're not going to have rabbit fur. That's a whole <laughs> other thing. Ah. Uh. Anyway, 
Um, hmm. There must be other things I was supposed to talk about. I don't remember what they are. You didn't have a there list? is anything that anyone said, should I message you about that? Why don't you go off the script? I'm talking about it. <laughs> script. Uh, so the link will be in the description box for David Weiss and the uh, P1000 he purchased. So you can go on Amazon and then leave a comment on it about Flat Earth for those right. out there who will be reading it and wondering why people are purchasing the video. Right. Um, I want to direct your attention to the Hori Sheet Show. If you've not subscribed, he's in the live chat and he does some really cool things. He's in his uh, green screen Tesla and uh, he does this thing called Chat Roulette and it's just he, he cool nice and job. fun. He it, certainly does. He does a really, really great job, uh, and he is relentless. You know, he he really gets in there and and flat smacks a lot of people, and it's it's fantastic. Considering the amount of beer he drinks while doing it, it's impressive. He does drink a lot of beer. Yeah, he does. Well, and you know, I don't endorse drinking and driving, even though it's a CGI car. Yeah, well, it's a Tesla that never actually went anywhere. Oh, then we're okay. Yeah, exactly. It's actually, it's fine. Hmm. And also, I'd note that the logo, if you guys are watching his show, the logo on the side of his car is the Hori Sheet logo, which he didn't actually put on the top of anything. The car, supposedly, that went into space had no logos on it at all. Yeah, that's one of the little bugaboos. You don't like that. No. Yeah. I don't. Um, Embrace it. Go for broke. If you're going to fake it, throw your name all over that place. I did get a really cool um, handwritten letter from Brad. You know, a handwritten letter like this. Did it have cologne on it? A nice stank. <laughs> no, no. I, I, I get handwritten stuff every once in a while. It's nice. But what it is actually is a research paper that he completed. And he wanted me to have a copy. It's called Oddities with Blue Origin and SpaceX. And this is a very well done research paper. I mean, it's, uh, you know. Nice. This is good stuff. So talking about Jeff Bezos and, you know, very interesting, good stuff. I, I wish it would be read out loud on a video. It would be very good for Brad to do that. So um, what else? Anyone here? Anyone have any ideas? Any more categories? We've got quite a lot. And thank you for your participation. And if I didn't read your category earlier because we weren't in chat when we first started talking about this and we didn't, we missed some, I will watch this show again because the chat comes up on the screen and see if there are things that I missed and didn't write down. Right. So next week, same time, same channel, we're going to get the nominations. We'll put all the categories into a list. Mark and I will both have those categories written down right in front of our faces. And we will I'll put in the description box of the video, the categories, and then you can think about it yourself, who you'd like to nominate. One more quick thing. Uh, in addition to the Los Angeles Behind the Curve United States premiere, it is also going to be showing at a small festival up near Seattle. If you're in the Seattle area, it's up north a little bit. It's up in Bellingham. You're going to that, aren't you? I am going to that. It's, there's two showings, one on a Thursday and one on a Sunday. I am definitely going to the Sunday one. Uh, what Daniel, day the, when is this this month? Nope, next month. Next month. When next, next month? month? Uh, middle of next month. Oh, nice. The uh, Daniel's flying up for it, as a matter of fact. They invited oh, wow. uh, Daniel to be there. And... So I'm going to be, so it's going to be a little odd because Daniel and I are going to be on the stage for the first time, you know, answering questions. And so I'm just going to try to. That will be great. Now, I hope somebody records this. Oh, I mean, can somebody they record might. I don't know who's going to go, but if you're, if you guys are in the Seattle area and you want to see the documentary, it's going to be playing up at the, uh, I think it's called Doctober in That's Bellingham. That's a very, very uh, creative name, Doctor. Yeah, Doctober. And I will definitely be there for the Sunday. I don't know if I'm going to be here for the, th for the Thursday one. Uh, I mean, I don't know if anyone's going to be talking. I may just go watch it uh, on Thursday and see who could go with. But I wish I lived in your neighborhood. Um, there's a couple of docu-series documentary filmmakers that are lately talking to various people in Flat Earth. Right. Some have talked to you, some have talked to me, some have talked to Robbie D, some have talked to Bob of Globusters and other people. So maybe more things are coming. We don't really well, know. I mean, we're in eight right now, and that's not shabby, considering mm -hmm. uh, the topic, to be perfectly honest. Wait, you said we're at eight? Eight what? Eight festivals. Oh, eight festivals. Oh. Oh yeah, that's true. We're in. Yeah. We're in. Okay, so we're in October in Bellingham. We're in Documenta, and I honestly I can't remember if that's Madrid or Mexico. 
someone should look that up because mm -hmm. I, I don't speak Spanish. The uh, Melbourne Festival, the MIFF, the Hot Docs, which you and I went to in Toronto, the LA Festival, which is coming up this weekend, the Calgary Festival, which is happening, I think, is at the same time. So I think Robbie's going to get a chance to see it at the same time as the LA people. And Sydney Underground Film Festival, that's coming up. And then the one that isn't even on there yet, but we know that it's it's happening, is the uh, the Denver Festival. But the Denver Festival is happening a week before the conference, not a couple of days before the conference. So if anybody's out in Colorado and you want to see it, uh, it should, the, the official times and dates, I think it's going to be on the 4th. There's two showings. But, uh, and I, I don't want to rattle them off because they may change. Um, I want to say hello to Joe Pierce, who wrote me an email about planting fruit trees on flat earth and tens of thousands of wildflowers. He sent me this email in July. That's how far back I am with emails. So many emails. Hello to Carissa Bullock. Um, she lives in Hawaii. And someday, Mark, you and I are going there. Okay. Right? Yes. Are, yes, we, we are. Yes. Stay with her. She's invited us. Um, Irene Tosimak uh, wrote me um, last month and said that she's been following the whole uh, Paul McCartney and the Paul slash fall thing. And she listened to uh, my interview with Mike Williams, which is on my channel and found it fascinating and gave me some of her theories. It's a really good video. Um, and Mike Williams is within the flat earth realm, the premiere uh, Paul McCartney is uh, not the guy you think he is, researcher. <laughs> so um, what else? I want to say hello to Mary Beth Snyder, who wrote me an email about the world's oldest astronomical clock. She sent me a pretty cool uh, email. I got that one. And um, a guy named uh, Martin Schumacher writes, how do you begin to share to give of a life that's resulting at my age in a life and understanding of what love, truth, and purpose of life is? A lifelong pursuit proving to be the single priority search over through my entire life. And it's all about flat earth. I'm just read you the little bit there, how deeply this affects people, you know? Right. They need to reach out and write to somebody about it. And I want to say hello to Brian Ezrin of Canada. We met up with him and had dinner with he and his wife, Mirtha. She, uh, he wrote us a, an email just kind of saying hello to you and I. I think you got that one too. That's Brian. Brian yeah. from Mississauga. Um, and Donna Diaz also wrote me just a couple of days ago about the April 2018th show with Mike Williams about Paul McCartney. So that show is proving to be very fascinating to people. Um, uh, the topic is is endlessly fascinating. So maybe someday there'll be a, a reveal of the whole Paul McCartney thing. But I think Perfect. these things are never revealed. That's what I think about Flat Earth. I don't expect anybody like Trump or whoever his successor is will come out one day and go, all right, everyone, the Earth's flat. We lied to you. I don't think right. that's going to happen. But if there is ever any disclosure, even if it's soft disclosure about something that's important to those of us who are looking for truth, I think the best year to do it in would be 2020 because then we see 2020 vision. So oh, that'd it's be good. great. 2020, the year of disclosure, all the lies come out. Let's, let's work toward that. You know, Ooh. we have this infighting we spoke of earlier and, you know, ridiculous. Flatter 2020, make the world great again. Yeah. I think that's, we should hashtag with that. That's the hashtag same team that I've been doing and others have been doing. It's, uh, it's, it's about that. We're I, like, I, like, I hadn't thought about the, the 2020 vision. That's yeah, good. 2020. Yep. Do you just think of that? Yeah, right now. Wow, that's awesome. You know me and my ideas. I do. It's a little known fact. I have some pretty good ideas. You know, it's not just a pretty face, folks. <laughs> anyway, that's the show. Thanks, everyone, for being here. Thanks to Greer for getting fur on my drink. I'm still drinking <laughs> anyway. Because you know when you've got pets and they get fur in your food or drink, you're like, whatever. <laughs> right. If it was somebody else's fur or hair, you'd be like, Whoa. but if it's your pet's Cheers. I'm impressed you finished that. Mm. You were what and is known a long, long time ago as a teetotaler, a teetotaler. I believe. Yeah. yeah, lightweight, I guess. Oh, you're a huge lightweight. Anyway, looking forward to seeing everybody in Denver. Description box has details to the things we've spoke of. If you've got any categories that we didn't discuss, something you think is great, come back to this video and put it as a comment in the video after it makes its way to YouTube. And that's it.
Hello to everyone and goodbye to everyone, depending upon when you are joining this video. Uh, Mark, thanks for being here. Aw, uh, well, you know, I struggle through it. It's a, it's a contractual obligation. It's a burden. <laughs> Anyway, this concludes episode number 250 of Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes, The Secret Show. See you next Wednesday for yet another secret show where this time we get the nominations for the Flatty Award winners. And until then, keep it flat. Hail Hydra, go to the thing, George Clooney, something, something. I and don't know. blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. <laughs>